Excellence transcends any passing glory. And it's in the pursuit of excellence where greatness is won. Gilbert came out of there with it. A diving pole check in the gut. They score! Red Sutter! And the Blackhawks are on the verge of getting rid of the Red Wings. Within the heart of America, in a town known as Chicago, there is a hockey team whose commitment to excellence is surpassed only by its passion for the game. Now Noonan out of the corner, centering. They score! The hat trick for Graham! And the hat comes cascading down from the stadium rafters. A distinguished past where legends once roamed lays the foundation of honor that endures today. Play racing. He's got a break! Too late for number 500! And like the conquering heroes of ages gone by, a new generation carries the torch of a tradition as proud as the city for which it was named. Here comes Ronick in over the line, a spinorama move, now pull it to his forehead, shoots, he scores! Jeremy Ronick, what a goal! A team of heart in a place of spirit, the favorite sons to the city of big shoulders, the Chicago Blackhawks. Standing as a milestone for a long tradition, the 1991-92 campaign marked the NHL's 75th season. Opening night at Chicago Stadium saw the Blackhawks and Red Wings debut in apparel more common to an earlier era. It's better each and every year. The athletes are bigger, stronger, faster. The best hockey ever played is the hockey being played today. It was a night where past and present came together. The President's Trophy was awarded to the Blackhawks in recognition of last season's prolific performance. The occasion brought dignitaries from high places around the league, as well as hometown fans like actor Jim Belushi, newly appointed as the team's celebrity captain. Stanley Cup, this year, no doubt about it, this is the year, the 75th anniversary. That's what I wish for them, that's what I wish for everyone in Chicago. That's what I wish for me. <laughs> the Blackhawks winning the Stanley Cup. Michel Goulet scored the Hawks' first points of the season with two goals in the opening game. Now long run, right wing cuts in there for Goulet. He's in. He scores! A great pass by Steve Larmer to put Michel Goulet on the doorstep. As the season progressed, Jeremy Roenick's artistry unfolded. And what a brilliant play that was! He turned Bob McGill inside out like a turnstile. A brilliant Jim Waite occupied the Nets for the month of October. Here come the Wings, here's a lead, another breakaway for the Wings. Wait a minute, you're not going to score there. Jimmy Wade, a spectacular debut. It would be a season of first. Bouncing to Conroy, his shot, and a save by Vernon. Quickly they score! And Stu Grimson has just scored his first NHL goal. Chris Chelios would enjoy one of his finest seasons yet. There four guys piled up on the ice in front of Casey. Chelios is the only one to locate it, and he tucked the backhander. The Hawks' aggressive style was not for the faint of heart. He had his head down, and Steve Smith buried him. That's just hard-nosed hitting. Oh, and Marchman! That is flying into the air with a hip check. Oh, what a hit. That was a solid, clean hit. And Smith made him pay. We've seen open ice hitting like no other season. You've got your head down in this league, you're going to get caught, and that's exactly what happened. The winds of change swept through Chicago in 1991, a year that saw the Blackhawks bid farewell to old friends and welcome new faces. We've got a good foundation here in terms of our program and the players that we have that are committed to it. One of the things when things happen, you know, you have to make uh, changes. And um, uh, we've made changes which we felt, you know, would be great for playoff hockey. But even in a league where transition is commonplace, the effects of the team's alterations ran deep. It's tough. Uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of people say that you just have to go out in the ice and produce and, and play hard and things will happen. But uh, there's a lot of intangibles that come in whenever there's, there's so many changes made. I mean, it was, I think, a very difficult uh, time for us. We made a lot, of, uh, a lot of moves. A lot of different players came in. A lot of friends left. And uh, uh, it was a difficult adjustment. The team's transformation carried with it a spirit of renewal as well. 
we're good guys around here, and we uh, we made good friends with the new guys. And uh, the main thing is uh, accepting people as as they come along and as they as they go away. And uh, it's it's pretty good right now. The new edition of the Blackhawks showcased players to fill every role. The changes we made. Uh, we're also reflective of the times and also reflective of the league. Stefan Mateau arrived from Calgary, coming off a successful rookie campaign. Rod Buskis, an aggressive force on defense, was brought in from the LA Kings. Winger Tony Horacek was instrumental in the Hawks' playoff success. Igor Kravchuk, basking in the glow of Olympic gold, provides a reassuring presence on defense. Forward Tony Herkitz, who came to the Hawks in midseason from Quebec, found Chicago a pleasant change of scenery. I mean, I've been to the East Coast and West Coast now, and, and Midwest is still the best. The move was no different for Rob Brown, whose aggressive offensive demeanor gave the Hawks a lift after the All-Star break. It's over! He did give up the rebound, and Rob Brown pokes it in! From them, I came to a winning organization that's you know, trying to win the Stanley Cup and has a good shot at it. So I, I was excited to get here and excited to, uh, you know, start playing and hopefully have a chance to win the Stanley Cup. The neutral zone has become hazardous territory for Blackhawk opponents. Now Brian Bellows to center. Oh, what a hit by Marchman. Brian Marchman, whose open ice assaults ignite his teammates, arrive from Winnipeg in July. I still get a rush. You know, when the national anthem starts up or when I'm skating around in warm-up, if there was somebody that could explain it to me, I'd like to meet them because uh, I can't describe the, uh, the excitement that's generated in this building for, for game in and game out. With four Stanley Cups to his credit, the arrival of Steve Smith from Edmonton brought the Blackhawks a proven leader on defense. I think it's a tight checking game and a lot of clutch in the ground and hard hitting and, and uh, physical style of play. And, uh, I think that's something that's expected of me. Donnelly for Taylor, he got flipped by Smith. Smith was happy to make the transition from one winning organization to another. It's an organization that prides itself on hard work and, and desire and, and uh, wanting to win. And I think it's been a, a pretty successful venture this year. The acquisition of Brent Sutter brought yet another winning presence to the Hawks lineup. Sutter around and check right and shoot. He well, they're a bunch of great guys. Uh, it goes right uh, throughout uh, the organization, uh, right from the top to the bottom. And I'm really excited about being a Blackhawk and helping this team, this organization win. With two Stanley Cups and 11 seasons with the New York Islanders, Sutter leads by example with a strong work ethic. It takes all kinds to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, if you just have one type of player, you'll never win. It takes all types of players and personalities, and um, we've all uh, gotten settled down now, and it's uh, kind of like a, a new home to us, and we're really looking forward to it. Behind the net, old threw it in front. Here's Brown, fires, and a save by Waite. And he holds on again. Despite the gallant efforts of Jim Waite, the void left by goaltender Ed Balfour took its toll in the season's early going. There's no question about it. It does have an impact on your club. And there are a number of circumstances uh, that come into play. Eddie Balfour was the last man to report in the National Hockey League this year. That probably cost us 10 points. Put it to Housley, shooting. Where'd it go? A shot. Balfour, what a save! Coming off a heralded rookie season, Balfour ran into contractual roadblocks in the offseason providing for his late arrival in the fall. You play mind games with yourself a lot, especially when the contract problems are going on and that, and I think Eddie did a great job when he stepped back in. He played, uh, he stepped right back into where he was the year before. Winner of the Calder Trophy as the league's outstanding rookie in 1991, Belfour returned to the lineup November 2nd against Minnesota, prepared to embark on another successful year. It would have been nice to start the season with the team, but uh, unfortunately it didn't work out that way, and. Uh, you know, you just take it from one day to the next and try and get better. And, uh, you know, I don't think it, this season's any different than uh, seasons in the past. With Belfour back in the saddle, the Blackhawks rolled ahead through the second month of the season. Here's Larmer up the middle, centering a shot, they score! Jeremy Roenick! He cuts in, lets it go, he scores! He's thrown! Mike Keenan's new formula began to realize its potential in a December engagement with the North Stars. Brian Marchman scored his first goal as a Blackhawk. Marchman breaks in. Here's the shot. He scores! 
while fans tip their hats to Steve Larmer. A model of consistency, Steve Larmer personifies professionalism on and off the ice. He's, uh, you know, another power forward of ours who, uh, who goes out every night to help the team. And, uh, you know, that just tells Steve Larmer itself, just uh, commitment and uh, just an overall team player. Now Ronick over the line, left it for Larmer, lets it go, he scores! Steve Larmer! With a streak of 800 consecutive games played, Larmer is third on the NHL's all-time list. Durable as well as dependable. Natural. Definitely natural. He's uh, one of the best readers of plays I've ever, ever played with. And uh, just an all-around great guy. One of, the, one of the best personalities I've ever been fortunate enough to, to meet in, in the game of hockey. Third among the Blackhawks' all-time leading scorers, Larmer's defensive contributions are easily overlooked. Defensively, I think he's our best defensive forward. Um, uh, last year, I won the uh, Selkie Award, but if he wouldn't have scored so much, he probably would have won it. He doesn't like the uh, uh, celebrity kind of thing. He, he, uh, he's always the first guy to leave and try to sneak out the back doors. Providing the Blackhawks with steady production and quiet leadership, Steve Larmer has elicited nothing but respect from his teammates. He can do everything on the ice. That's the type of forward you... You know, every coach dream to, to coach, and it's pretty nice, you know, to have the chance to play with. Christmas at Chicago Stadium brought teammates, coaches, and families together to celebrate the season. Uh, they're taking a lot out uh, of the community, and I'm particularly proud of each and every Blackhawk for what they put back in. The spirit of giving seems to follow the Blackhawks organization throughout the year to places like the Children's Memorial Hospital. Well, good luck to you, buddy. I hope you become a real big star. All right? The annual Skate with the Hawks was a success once again this year, bringing fans and players together. It's easy. You just let the puck slide off your stick and point to where you want it to go. The hockey bandwagon spread to the inner city, where the sport was introduced firsthand to underprivileged kids. You know, it's not a whole lot that you do. You only spend a, a very short time in here, but, uh, you know, if you can just make a little bit of an impact and it helps, uh, it's, it's a great cause. Future Hawks at Glenview Arena received instruction from the highest levels and found out even the best of the best can take a spill. Giving back to the Chicago community, it's a Blackhawk tradition for all generations. Those players go out and they have a good time putting something back in the community. And I want to thank each and every one of them for doing it. As the new year drew close, the Blackhawks continue to impress with the play of Jeremy Roenick. He races in there, three on two, left it for Larmer, for Roenick, he scores! Chris Chelios. Larmer into the blue zone. Centered it. Three score! And Michelle Goulet. Trying to center it. Deflected Goulet. He scores! Feeding Larmer. No alley to shoot it. Then he shot it in the center. He score! Brian Noonan. Brian Noonan electrified the hometown ice with seven consecutive goals over two games to set an all-time Blackhawks record. Into the corner. Centering pass. They score! Brian Noonan! The new year carried with it a renewed focus. The Blackhawks won nine games in January, enjoying their most productive month to date. The Ronick side of the net, put it in front. Over the stick of Goulet to Larmer, a back entry score! What a shot by Steve Larmer! Steve Larmer and Jeremy Ronick led an assault on Minnesota. Clear to center, chipped it ahead. Here's the chance for Ronick. He's in, he shoots, he scores! Jeremy Ronick, a short-handed goal! Brent Sutter's methods produced two goals in a win over Washington. Here comes Sutter over the line. Sutter around it, check right and shoot. He scores! Brent Sutter! We had a spurt where we didn't make any trades, and the guys pretty much got pretty comfortable with each other, and we started to learn more about each other, and uh, we got to playing better. Over the line, got around a 
Jack Jack moving in shoot. What a save, Ribbon! And up the side of the net. No reason for them to jump at him because Stern had his head down from the blue line, and Smith stood him up with a solid hit. Nothing wrong with that hit at all. The Detroit Red Wings and the Chicago Blackhawks locked up in a 2-2 tie. 20 minutes left to decide the issue. One possesses the voice. Here comes Goulet cutting in, centering Chelios. Big save by Rudy. The other provides the insight. Good uh, dive taken by Chelios to make it seem worse than it was. And that nullifies the remaining 120 of the power play. They are well respected. Best commentators in hockey. Well received. Seeing two, two guys having fun doing their jobs um, is only good for uh, for everybody. Often imitated. Overall, Pat, what do you think? Well, there's no doubt about that. Lamer over the line center. He's shooting. He scores! Steve Lammer. But never dull. President of the National Hockey League, John Ziegler. Trying to tell that young lady where he got his shirt. <laughs> they call them as they see them. He lost control of the game, and this turned into a mess because of Wendell Clark's Bush League play and because of Dan Marawelli's desire to keep the game close for a Canadian televised game. And they've seen it all. Shocked, appalled, and amazed. <laughs> Don't they know this is the Sabbath? For the past 10 seasons, Pat Foley and Dale Talon have been the voice and color of the Chicago Blackhawks. With each and every broadcast, the chemistry is apparent. We yuck it up a little bit. He teases me and I tease him, and uh, why not? Let's have a little fun with it. It's a lot there to be teased. Veronic <laughs> <laughs> in the deep slot around it. Jack putting in. In a demanding profession, the approach is simple. I think we've both got the same type of attitude and personality, and uh, easy going. You know, we don't put a lot of pressure on each other. Back to Larmer, in over the line on the left side, lets it go. Foley grew up in Chicago and set his sights on broadcasting at an early age. It's, it's obviously a dream come true for me. Your mother's quite a color person. Too. <laughs> <laughs> you with she, she did one and once only I had her on the air. And here's what she said. I, I said, Mom, what do you think of the game? And she said, oh, the owls are playing so well and the fans are so excited. And honey, you're doing such a wonderful job. I said, Give me that bike back. You're never getting on the air again. Leaving for Ronick. He's got Smith on the move. Center. Talon, who played five seasons with the Hawks, brings a wealth of insight into the booth. I've got some friends still on the team that I, uh, you know, not very many left, but I do <laughs> still have some. And, I, you know, I hate to be critical of those people, but like Pat says, you have to be honest. And uh, I try to be positive as much as I can and be insightful and, and try to be humorous. Got away from a check to Thompson, a long shot. Tip! Oh, what a save by Belfort, a deflection! Although there may be some difference in opinion, the pair has earned the respect of the players themselves. Well, there's a couple of beauties right there. I think, uh, I think they're, they're one of the best tandems in, in, uh, in sport announcing today. I think the Blackhawks are very fortunate to have two uh, commentators like, like Pat and Dale. They're uh, the first class people and announcers. How long will the tandem stay a team? Till they run me out of town. <laughs> I hope to. Until, uh, until I'm ready for the senior tour, which is uh, <laughs> another decade away. So I'd like to do it at least another 10 years. Need a caddy? <laughs>
Taken by Goulet, over the line to Ronick, picks his way to the front of the net, and Ronick takes two, he's here! I think when I was 16, I went to junior camp and you started to play against guys that were, you know, first rounders in the NHL and bona fide guys that would make it. That's when I began to realize what, what I could do. Dumps it in. They say you'd not reach center, but Hudson's there to say my he scores! Mike Hudson! So I just wanted to go out and show that, uh, that I did have the heart in me and that I did want to play hockey and I did uh, want to do what was best for the team and uh, be a part of the team just like everybody else. Ronick with a chance. He cuts in around McGill. Jeremy Roenick, Mike Hudson. Though born in different countries, they share similar backgrounds, each holding a common love for the game that has brought them together as friends. Roenick hails from Boston, while Hudson comes from Ontario. Both arrived in Chicago three seasons ago. Here comes Roenick in over the line, a spin around the move, now pull it to his corner, and shoots, he scores! Jeremy Roenick, what a goal! It's just so good that that, that kid, I could, I could call him a kid because he is just a kid. It's amazing um, to be so good at such a young age. Success on the ice begins and ends with preparation. But after a rigorous practice, the two take refuge in their Elmhurst apartment. Sometimes we sit downstairs together and just watch TV together. Huddy likes to watch Jeopardy and I can never beat him. So. When time allows, relaxation is the first priority. What is this is my favorite job. A popular pair, visitors are known to drop by without warning. Hey, Mike, how you doing, buddy? What Just do you thought want? I'd drop by and get a cup of sugar. <laughs> I don't have it. Go away. <laughs> you got any juice this week? Professional <laughs> hockey does have its demands. Consequently, domestic duties are often neglected. It's in the middle of February, and uh, <laughs> we're going to go out and we're going to deal on that for next year. <laughs> we're going to go out and dig a new hole and replant it and cut her down again next year and use it again. Last time you made your bed. Probably about uh, when I bought the house. <laughs> I think it came made. <laughs> Hasn't been the same since. And then Vince Alette stole it to Hudson, a backhander, he scores! Mike Hudson! Hockey was introduced to Mike Hudson at an early age. My dad did the old proverbial rink in the backyard trick, so uh, to keep us occupied at nights. I started skating when I was about three years old, so that's all I can remember is playing hockey in the backyard with my brothers. After years of preparation, his entrance into the NHL had special meaning. That was the biggest thrill of my life. I never realized that I could make a living out of it. My mom says I, she still remembers the day that I found out that I could make money at this sport. It was the greatest day of my life. Here's the draw, long feet right on the money. Ronick has a breakaway, cuts and shoots, he scores! Ronick's hockey origins began with strong guidance from his parents. Well, my mom always tells me never to forget where you came from what it took to get there, what kind of hard work it took to get there, um, that you're never better than anybody else, regardless of, uh, of what you accomplish, of who, where you play, what you do, how much money you make. Jeremy was the Blackhawks' first round pick in 1988 and has played in the last two All-Star games. Personal accomplishments that Ronick keeps well in perspective. You know, you just have to smack yourself around a couple times and say, you know, it's what you always dreamed of and you know it's right in front of you. It's something that you want to protect and something that really means a lot to you. Ronick's days as a bachelor are numbered with wedding plans set later this year. Got it to Steve Smith and he sent it Ronick right in, he scores! Jeremy's success has well exceeded fiance Tracy's expectations. Well, when we were in high school, I didn't think, you know, I mean, he was a great player and all, but, um, I mean, I knew he was going to do well, but I never expected, you know, for him to be this great. Roommates and teammates, a combination that works out well. We get along really well. He's a, you know, he's one of the better guys that I've met in my career, and, uh, you know, a lot of the guys in the hey, team. Huh? You're welcome, Mike. I'm very happy. So, so... I don't know what uh, I must say because it's my inside my heart. With newly minted Olympic gold, 
Igor Kravchuk arrived from the unified team. He was met with rave reviews in his NHL debut. Playing their best hockey of the season, the Hawks won nine games in the month of March. And he ran out of road. Oh, picks it up, and he got flat by Ronnie. It was amazing. Ed Belfour's prowess in the net only increased as the season wore on. Gave it away. Here's a chance. A shot. Belfour! What a save on Bill Guerin! Rookie goaltender Dominic Hasek had his moments in relief of Ed Belfour. Put it over the line to Hull. Cutting in. Fires! And a save by Hasek! The Hawks looked to leaders like... Dirk Graham. In behind uh, Hudson, trying to set up a Graham. He scores! Dirk Graham! And Chris Chalios. Now Chalios gets it over the Pittsburgh line. Shooting, he scores! The momentum increased with each new challenge. Brown held it in. Four Sutter. He cuts and shoots. He scores! Chris Sutter! Far point to Kravchuk. Put it side of the net to Ronick. Cedric, he scores! Dean Lerner! Jeremy Ronick join the likes of Hull and Makita, scoring his 50th goal of the season in a game against Boston. Ronick over in behind the net with it. Ronick trying to center with the flag, and they score! The 50th goal of the year for Jeremy Ronick. It isn't pretty, but JR makes history, becoming only the third Hawk player to score 50 goals in a season, and his teammates love it. All the points you have and all the other stuff, I'd give it back for, uh, for one Stanley Cup anytime. On the following night at the stadium, he added another to the total. Rob Brown to the line, crab chuck along, shot, Perthium gave a rebound, they score! 51 goals for Jeremy Roenick! The Hawks secured a second place finish in the Norris division with the playoffs on the horizon. But as the regular season drew to a close, a dark cloud loomed over the NHL 75th year. We're just approaching it like nothing's happening. It's, it's a big concern, but we're, we're trying to finish up the season here, finish ahead of St. Louis, and uh, you know, that, that's our goal right now. A player's strike on April 1st brought play to a halt as the fate of the playoffs hung in the balance. You know, nothing like this ever happened in my life where uh, you know we could just stop playing and then because of the money situation. And... With a wide division between players and owners, Cancellation appeared imminent until 11th hour talks brought both sides together. It's very encouraging and, and hopefully, you know, when they talk again next time, you know, they can hammer something out. At. The playoffs would go on as players returned to work. From a league standpoint, I think you've got a bunch of players that are pretty excited about playing hockey right now. And... With the season salvaged, the Blackhawks looked ahead to the playoffs. It looks like the guys have their minds back where they're supposed to be and ready to get back to work. The opponents in round one would be the St. Louis Blues. The intensity is there all the time, and uh, you know it's going to be a tough, grinded-out game. And, and that's kind of our style, and that's their style, so it's, uh, it's, it's going to be a battle, that's for sure. The Hawks had not won a playoff opener in seven years, but in game one against the Blues, they laid to rest a nagging ghost. Hudson gets it over the line to Newton. He's in! Newton shot, he scores! Forechecking was the key, and Jocelyn Lemieux was the catalyst. His goal late in the second was all that was needed. Ed Belfour was Sterling in the Nets. Steal to Hull, quickly countering Hull to the line, faking centered at Chen and shoots Belfour! A three to one win gave the Hawks the early advantage. You have to stay respectful and understand that you can be beaten by anyone at any time on any given day. That's why you have playoffs. In game two at the stadium, Chris Chelios led the charge with back to back power play goals in the first period. Jeremy Roenick on the near side into the corner. Sutter walks in front to Chelios. And Johnny scores! Chris Chelios stuck in from the line, and Brent Sutter found him with a perfect pass. A second period collision took Ed Belfour out of the game. Enter Dominic Hasek, who faced down Hall in his first playoff appearance. And a save by Joseph. He saw it on the way quickly for Hall. He's in it again. Brent Hall, another breakaway. Shoot. Hasek again! Dominic Hasek! With the game tied at two, Tony Horacek was initiated into the NHL playoff. Dumping it into the blue zone. Horacek there for shoots and scores! Tony Horacek! The first ever playoff game for Tony Horacek. Scores on his first ever shot in the playoff. 
but a 5-3 Blues win sent the series to St. Louis tied at one. It makes for a real rivalry. It makes for uh, two cities that uh, they get on each other's nerves and uh, two teams that get on each other. And the Blues stormed out to a 2-0 lead in the early moments of Game 3. But on a first period power play, Jeremy Roenick fired the first shot of a four-goal barrage. There's Roenick and he scores! Pete Brown found him! The Blues' Garth Butcher sent the game to overtime with a tying goal late in the third. In his first playoff start, Dominic Hasek proved courageous in the first overtime period. Brad Hall broke through in the game's second overtime. Hall fires, Blues win. But it would be the Hawks' last taste of defeat for some time to come. Let's throw all the berries right here and put everything on the line. You go out there every night and uh, you just give it all you got. The Hawks turned in one of the finest performances of the playoffs in game four, out-muscling and out-shooting the Blues 37-9. The Blues found themselves on seven straight power plays, but Stefan Matteau scored his first ever playoff goal shorthanded. Matteau a breakaway in short and a shoot. He scores! Stefan Matteau! The Hawks pulled away in the third with vintage Jeremy Roenick. Into the blue zone, a spin around to his backhand. He cuts into the forehand and a save rebound. They score! Tying the series at two, the Hawks launched a streak that would rewrite the record book and carry them to the threshold of Lord Stanley's doorstep. Next to the team is their backs are against the wall, they're facing elimination, and we don't want to go into St. Louis facing elimination. We want to come out here tonight, get a win out of our belt, and go into St. Louis with you know, a lot of confidence. The playoffs are won and lost with emotion. Game five brought the series home to Chicago, where the Hawks showcased their emotion in a relentless assault. Keith Brown provided an assist on Stefan Matteau's first period score. The Blues took the lead briefly in the second. But Steve Larmer sent Tremors through the stadium with his second goal of the night. Jocelyn Lemieux led the assault of the Chicago Four Checkers all evening. Late in the game, he found reward for his service. A 6-4 victory sent the Hawks back to St. Louis for what would be the series' final game. We're prepared and ready to play and ready to work hard. Then, uh... No, we should we should be all right. That's where discipline comes into it, and definitely we have to play discipline, uh, hard checking, hard checking, intense game. Shanahan let that go. Now Emerson in behind with a wraparound roll. Loose to Shanahan. Big save by Belfour. Goaltender Ed Belfour owned Game Six from the opening faceoff. With 38 saves on the night, Belfour frustrated the Blues at every opportunity. There's been a lot of icing violations. Here's home. Meanwhile, Jeremy Roenick lowered the boom on the Blues. His first period goal arrived on Keith Brown's eighth assist of the playoffs. Moves it back to Brown with a long shot off the goalpost. Rebound! They score! In the second period, Roenick and Chris Chelio sent a strong message to the Blues. The end was near. Chelios motors into the blue zone. A one-hand pass taken by Roenick. Around it, check, fires! He scores! A two-to-one victory moved the show to Detroit for the Norris Division Championship. Type of player that's a very talented individual and, and also a very caring and team-oriented player. And it's very, very seldom you get players like that. And Graham got it back to Chelios, a shot! Smart player, reads the play well, better than a lot of people I've ever seen. And uh, he's one of the tops out there, definitely. Hudson jammed it out to Chelios, cutting in. He's the guy on the power play, he's the key guy on the penalty killing, so he's a, he's a tremendous hockey player for us. Just wide, here's Chelios, the shot, score! Respect cannot be taken, it must be earned. And in the battleground of the National Hockey League, gaining the respect of one's peers is no small accomplishment. With a focused approach and an affinity for leadership, Blackhawks defenseman Chris Chelios stands alone as the league's best. Armour into the blue zone, centered it, they score! Chelios with a short-handed goal! One of Chicago's own, Chris grew up in the shadows of Chicago Stadium and played his prep hockey at Mount Carmel High School. But life is different now as a premier defenseman in the NHL. 
Chris and his wife Tracy reside in their Oak Brook home with their two sons, Dean and Jake. Dean's obsessed with Zambonis. I don't know if he likes hockey so much, but he's in love with the Zamboni. <laughs> Blackhawks broadcaster Dale Talon recently dropped by for a visit. It's like you shot from the point. You still haven't hit the net. Uh, I didn't want to hit the camera. <laughs> the road to the National Hockey League provided some unusual scenery for the Chicago native. Tempered by seven seasons with the Canadiens, Chris returned to Chicago in 1990, coming home to be a part of a team he watched as a kid. It's just great to be back in the stadium. Uh, Montreal is a great place to play, but this is where I grew up, and if I could win a cup here now, I think it'd be the best thing uh, that could ever happen. I'd you know, live here the rest of my life. That'd be, that'd be the icing on the cake. A natural charisma makes Chelios a favorite among Chicago fans as well as teammates. He's friends with everyone, and, uh, you know, he's just a great team leader, and uh, he's a real good friend of mine also. Uh, day in and day out, I, I've uh, got a new respect for him, and... Uh, uh, I think the world of, of the type of player he is and the, the type of person he is. Eager to give back the good graces bestowed upon him, Chris devotes much of his spare time to charity. Yeah, 2-2. Two, two. Gretzky didn't get any goals, though. You know, any little thing you can do, like come and sign a picture for him, or I just see their smiling faces, that's a, I get a great joy out of that. Both Chris and Tracy raise money for disabled kids through Chelly's Children a program they started in Montreal and continued in Chicago. I started getting familiar with a few people and making some contacts and you know, it's going to take a little time, but it just makes you feel good to see a little kid uh, that's not that's handicapped or underprivileged to, to make him happy. But Chelio's got a cheap shot from Ron Sutter at center right. Life in the NHL has its share of hard knocks, but unorthodox working conditions are all in a day's work. Well, I like to watch hockey because Chris plays, and uh, no, I don't really get too nervous. He knows what he's doing, and I, he's pretty smart on the ice, so I've never worried about him getting completely beat up or anything. <laughs> Despite the rigors of his job, Chris Chelios plans to stay with his chosen profession. I'm no good at golf, I'm no good at tennis, and people have been asking me that for years, and you think you have to come up with an answer, but I've finally come to the conclusion that I'm here for hockey, and that's it. <laughs>but maintain their aggressive demeanor. The game remained tied until late in the third when Jocelyn Lemieux broke free on a lead from Brent Sutter. Sutter shoots it in. Here's Lemieux there for shoot. He scores! And Lemieux makes it two to one Hawks. A two one win and their fourth in a row. The grand tour was beginning to take shape. As a whole, our team has been very composed, very disciplined, and uh, we've been focused. Jeremy Roenick wasted little time to open the scoring in game two. Chicago took command with just one minute elapsed in the game. Here's a chance for Eisenman walking right in. He shoots. Belfour got a piece. Belfour recorded 24 saves and repaid a debt to Detroit's Bob Probert. Probert got slugged by Belfour. Well, there you go. Ed Belfour was run over by Bob Probert in game one. Jocelyn Lemieux followed Belfour's lead. On the near side, Lemieux, a big hit on McGill. He had Bob McGill lined up and corked him. Greg Gilbert was the chosen sniper late in the first. Got away from Eisman, moves behind the wrapper on to Gilbert, he scores! While Steve Larmer gave the Hawks more than they needed for a 3-1 to -one victory. We realized that if we're going to go anywhere in the playoffs, that team discipline was had to be at the top of our list. And uh, uh, the guys have played hard in that and taken the body, but uh, we haven't retaliated, and that's been the big key for us. A sparkling Chicago stadium welcomed back its heroes for Game 3. An unprecedented sixth straight playoff win was in the offing. Jeremy Roenick's brilliance resulted in an unassisted goal to open the scoring. Racing over the Red Wing line, moves 
into the slot. Now the drive. He scores! Jeremy Roenick! Chris Chelio summoned the crowd to its feet with an inspired effort late in the second. Into the near circle. Cuts for the net. Shoots! And a save rebound. They score! Chris Chelio! A solo effort from the Hawks star! Steve Larmer added fuel to the fire behind Chelios and Smith. Moves it across to Smith on flip shot. Deflected to Larmer. He scores! Detroit showed character to tie the game at four. But on this spring evening, it was the captain's turn to shine. Hudson. Hacks had it, crab shot, it's up, they score! Dirk Ryan tipped it in! A 5-4 victory and six straight wins. The Madison Avenue faithful had sweep on their minds. Well, we're just playing with a lot more discipline right now, and uh, I think we learned a lot from last year, and uh, we're... Uh, just trying to concentrate on playing from whistle to whistle. If game three was a shootout, then game four was a duel. To McGill, he hacked at it. Belfort stopped the game a rebound. Belfort the same rebound. He stopped another one. Chicago's Ed Belfort and Detroit's Tim Shevelday kept the outcome in question until the game's final moments. Trying to go up the middle. He could get it out. Here's Iserman. And a save by Belfort. It wasn't until 134 remaining in regulation that Bedlam erupted. And Gilbert came out of there with it. A diving poke deck in the deck. They score! Brent Sutter picked up a loose puck. And the Blackhawks are on the verge of getting rid of the Red Wings. The duel now over. The Hawks left the ice as Norris Division champions, dominating a team they defeated only once during the regular season. The Blackhawks played their style of game. Defensive style game, uh, hard checking, and uh, you know a hard forecheck. And you know, that's our game. Establishing dominance over the Edmonton Oilers, the campaign surged forward to a rematch of the 1990 Campbell Conference Finals. They're a bunch of junkyard dogs. They've uh, gone through it before, and uh, they don't give up easy. Jeremy Roenick dazzled the hometown crowd in the first period. Run away from a check, lose it on the backhand, sick alley, he scores! Jeremy Roenick! An electrifying sequence of sick handling! With the score tied at two early in the second, the Blackhawks entered their most prolific minute in the team's history. They coughed it up, Brown in alone, Rob Brown to Peluso, and he scores, Mike Peluso! For Larmer, tees it up, centered it, they score! What a pass by Larmer to Ronick! Out to the line, Chelios moves it across to Smith, his long shot, they score! Three shots, three goals in a record one minute, 26 seconds. Steve Larmer had four points on the night, including a breakaway strike in the third. Larmer got away from low, he's in. Larmer up breakaway, shoots, he scores! Rocking the house with an eight to two pounding of Edmonton, the Hawks impressed all with their eighth straight win. And they're gonna come back even harder on Monday and we have to make sure that we uh, elevate our play to another level. The Oilers jumped out to a two nothing lead in game two. Nichols, he scores! Steve Larmer scored late in the first period. The near side to Ronick, side of the net, Newman's back. Larmer, he scores! But Oilers goaltender Bill Ranford was magnificent, stopping 41 shots. One on one with for Mateau, he's in! Ranford! A save! Larmer broke the Ranford barrier once more in the third to tie the game at two. It's held in by Chelios. End of the corner, Goulet. Center one, Larmer, he scores! The deadlock remained until late in the game, when Michel Goulet gave his team their long-awaited lead. The side of the net, rebound, held into Larmer, cutting in the shot, they score! Tipped in by Michel Goulet! With the Hawks' ninth straight triumph, the ghosts of champions past began to stir. This may be their year. Well, we're up 2 nothing. We still have home ice, but we've got to go to Edmonton, prepared to win the game, you know, the game Wednesday night. If we don't, then uh, it's a whole new series. The Hawks brought their two-game lead to Northland's Coliseum, where the Alberta Clippers saved one final roar for game three. The resurgence of winter provided the Oilers with new life. The Hawks stood poised and relied on the power play. Rob Brown tied the game at two. Some help from Goulet, who's center one, tipped in, and they score, Rob Brown. Late in the second period, Chris Chelios delivered a shot from the point. Here's Chelios for the long shot, he scores, Chris Chelios! 
Edmonton battled back to tie the game in the third, but the ensuing overtime would be brief. Rounded around the board, Chalios, 10 and 1, they score! Hawks win! Jeremy Roenick tipped it in! Hawks win in overtime! They lead the series now, three games to nothing. The Hawks' 10th straight playoff win tied an NHL record. It's an extremely uh, great feeling when you know that there are 25 guys that are, that are committed to, to working hard, to uh, working for one, one specific goal. With the Stanley Cup Finals just 60 minutes away, the Blackhawks showed no signs of complacency in Game 4. Uh, trying to move up the slot, he did, he shoots, and the same rebound round, he scores! Mike Hudson put the finishing touches on Igor Kravchuk's lead. Does get to it, for center tip, they score! A diving deflection by Mike Hudson! As victory neared, so grew the intensity. Rob Brown tied a Hawk record with three assists in a period. His third came on Noonan's breakaway goal. And here's a breakaway for Noonan, he shoots, he scores! To the victors went the Campbell Conference title, an NHL record 11 straight playoff wins and a rendezvous with Lord Stanley for the first time in nearly two decades. We worked really hard this playoff so far. We're on a great roll, and we have to make sure that we stay respectful now. We have a lot of work to be done. This team worked extremely hard and has throughout the whole playoffs, and uh, we have the opportunity now to play for the Stanley Cup, and that's all we wanted when it started. It's a team effort all the way around. We played hard. You don't beat the Edmonton Oilers without uh, a great team effort with 20 guys. and. Uh, we have a lot of respect for the guys in the other room. They played hard, and uh, we were glad to come out on top. The long season had reached its final chapter. A span of 19 years lay between the Blackhawks and their last Stanley Cup appearance. This is the ultimate goal, to reach this point and then take the next step. I think that we only get so many opportunities as players and coaches play for the Stanley Cup. The final series began in Pittsburgh, where the defending champion Penguins stood poised to defend their crown. Touted as a classic showdown between Chicago defense and Pittsburgh offense, the series promised to be a battle. Chelios gets a pick and shoot, he scores! Chris Chelios got a pick from Brent Sutter. At 11.36 of the second period, Brent Sutter broke free on a lead from Larmer. As Larmer gets the line, feathered it in front, Sutter right in! With a 4-1 lead, a 12th straight win appeared certain. But late in the third period, Pittsburgh's rising young star dazzled all in the Steel City to tie the game at four. Yaramir Yager, the human highlight film. The pendulum had begun to swing. Come on, Jay. Keep working, keep working. All right, Drew, hit him with some speed now. Francis got this draw. Murphy's locks out the same rebound. The Hawks' historic streak would end at 11 as Pittsburgh gained the upper hand. Tough loss to take, but like I say, there's nothing we can do about that now. It's, it's very important for us to uh, make sure that we come back in game two and play hard. Game two in Pittsburgh saw Ed Belfour sparkle in the nets. Lead to Lemieux. Lemieux is in. Here's Big Mario. Pope check by Belfour. While the Blackhawks maintained an aggressive approach. Let him do. Take him. Go to him. Go to him. Go to him. Brian Marchman tied the game at one with his first ever playoff goal. Here comes Noonan over the line, got around Roberts, pulled down, centered at Marchman, he scores! But the deciding factor rested in number 66, who scored twice in the second period to give the Penguins a three to one win. It's not a flack effort, we're down, we're just, we've just gotta you know, dig down a little deeper and, uh, and we got the home crowd tomorrow night and hopefully we can get them behind us and get some momentum. Game three brought the finals to the sanctuary of Chicago Stadium. Oh, I love this place! Where some 18,000 faithful waited to quench a 19-year thirst. Two on one, hit with Stevens, target center, Stevens, Belfour! With his best save of the game! Ed Belfour's performance enraptured all who stood witness. The Hawks had early chances from Chelios and Larmer, but Penguin goalie Tom Barrasso found a gift from the post. Larmer, real stack into the Penguin zone. Shooting! Oh, my God! Oh, boys! Let's get in there, White. Come on! Work it, work it, work it! The game would be determined by the bounce of the puck. Uh, here's a long shot, they score! As time slipped by in the third, 
Michelle Goulet's final attempt to score fell short. The Hawks found themselves trailing three games to none. Everybody knows that we're down three nothing. It's pretty hard to come back, but you know we have a team with a lot of character, and pretty much sure you know next game should be interesting. The Blackhawks would fight the forces of history in Game Four. Only once before had a team overcome a three nothing deficit to win the cup. We're gonna play for victory. The team that wins the last game wins the Stanley Cup. Pittsburgh struck first with Yager's goal at 137 of the first. The stage was set for the captain's pure heroism. Dirk Graham's probably the best, best captain in the whole league. He'll do anything for you. He'll, uh, he'll go to war with you every single night. To me, he's just the captain of all captains. Now Noonan on the corner, centering. They score the hat trick for Graham. Dirk Graham. Three straight goals for one team, and Dirk Graham has done it. And the hat come cascading down from the stadium rafters. We're tied at three. In his first appearance in over a month, Dominic Kasich braved hockey's most potent attack. Bounces one to Mario. He got away from Chelios. Speed Stevens. He's in. Hasek out of the net. Hasek 50 feet out of the net. Pittsburgh took control with two goals in the third. Their 6-4 lead held until the 11-18 mark when Jeremy Roenick lit up the house. Here's a long shot. It's a great goal. It's a Jeremy Roenick. One, two, three, one, two, three, go. Come on, Hunty. I got some hits. With the end approaching, the Hawks gathered forces for one final assault. One more rush, maybe in the season for Chicago. Here comes Ronick flying over the line, stick handling, shooting! Tranche couldn't get it past Graham. Chalio's held in the center. Go ahead, what a save rebound! Top wide! And the Penguins have won it! Well, they did everything in their power, the Blackhawks, again tonight. Everybody still seems to be here in Chicago Stadium. With the Blackhawks being saluted by the greatest fans in hockey. So we have to be proud of it. And uh, we fell short, but uh, it's still a pretty good feeling going home. We have to make sure that we, uh, that we keep improving. And next year uh, is no different than now. And we, uh, we have to come out and we have to go. And so the curtain closed on the NHL 75th and longest season. Its glorious finale brought the Chicago Blackhawks to the threshold of hockey's most distinguished honor. And while Lord Stanley's Cup eluded their grasp, their pursuit of greatness lifted the hearts of their fans and the spirit of their city.